Hi, I'm Andy Scree, and today we're going to go over the Advanced Analytics 101. We're going to cover uh, the technical overview, including the architecture and the data processing pipeline, as well as the basic installation and setup of the solution. And we're going to go a deep dive into how to operationalize and use the product from a security analyst perspective, getting the most value out of the Advanced Analytics product. So we're going to start here by looking at the Exabeam architecture. So we're looking at the architecture guide here, and this is the multi-node cluster version of the XBM Advanced Analytics architecture. Now I'm going to cover the multi-node cluster. If it's a single node, everything happens on one single node. Uh, it all starts on the far left-hand side with the log sources. So you can see we have two log sources here. We have the SIM, and we also have syslog. So XBM can be configured to either fetch data out of an existing SIM via existing APIs, or receive syslog from that SIM, or syslog from any other uh, solution across the network. All of the data is going to be ingested into what we call LIME. And that stands for Log Ingestion and Message Extraction. LIME is there to receive the raw data and also to parse it into what XBeam calls message files. These are the smaller metadata files that the analytics engine is actually going to read and process. Once LIME has ingested the data, it resides in HDFS. That's where the raw log data lands in a Hadoop file system. And as you can see, in a multi-node architecture, it's distributed across all nodes. Once the data hits HDFS, it's going to parse the data into those message files, which again reside in Hadoop. And then it's going to be up to the processing pipeline in the XBeam Analytics solution to pick up those message files and start to analyze them. This happens in real time in memory. Once the data has been analyzed, that sessions are being built, data models and anomaly detections are triggered, all of the data is going to be dumped into a Mongo database. And again, this is distributed across all nodes. The UI and the user interface then reads uh, from Mongo database via APIs to display everything in the UI. So that was the overall high-level architecture of the XBeam Advanced Analytics. Now we're going to dive a little bit deeper and talk about what happens to data once it hits the appliance and how it moves through the processing pipeline. So what we're seeing is the overall end-to-end -end data flow within Exabeam. And this starts on the far left-hand side with log data. That log data is the raw data either received by fetching from a SIM or received via syslog. That log data is going to be transitioned into message files via parsing. Those message files are then going to get abstracted into what we call Exabeam events. And this step within the processing pipeline allows us to solve a lot of out-of-the-box use cases without a lot of manual mapping of data sources to data models or anomaly detections. And we'll talk a little bit more in detail about how that occurs. Once we have the events built, we go ahead and we stitch those events together into chronological timelines that we call sessions. When we have the sessions, we'll go ahead and model the behavior to understand the normal for every user and entity in the environment. And then once we have those data models, we're going to trigger rules against those data models to look for specific anomalies. So let's start by looking specifically at the log portion of the data flow. So we start here with raw logs. And as you can see, there's a sample here of what a raw log would look like. And in this case, it's a Windows event log. So these are very large events typically. Sometimes they include paragraphs within the log itself. We're going to go ahead, and this arrow here actually denotes a specific uh, configuration file that exists on the XBeam Advanced Analytics. And these are our parser configuration files. So we're going to take the raw logs, and we're going to run them against our parser configurations, and they're going to spit out message files. These message files are much smaller. And they're the metadata that XBeam cares about, things like the username, the source IP address, host information. We can get rid of a lot of this stuff in the Windows event log and other events that we don't necessarily need from an analytics perspective. So now we have the much smaller message files. And this is what the analytics is going to read to actually do the processing. Once we have the message files, we're going to go ahead and abstract these two events. And this arrow, in this case, indicates an, a configuration file called the event builder. And if we look at the event builder here, this is a sample of what the event builder looks like of the configuration. It's essentially saying, if I have a specific parsed message, and in this case, it's any of the files that are in this list, which is the message name, so my syslog 4768 or sumo 4768, and my user ends with a dollar sign, and it has this result code, one of these, OXO, a hyphen, or success. If all of the criteria in the message file meets these parameters, we are going to go ahead and build a computer logon event. And that computer logon event in analytics actually equates to mapping a host to an IP address. But we're going to go ahead and abstract all of these events using the event builder. 
Where this really makes sense is if you think about a VPN login. Exabeam can take a VPN login event from something like a Cisco VPN, Palo Alto, Juniper. And we don't care at the end of the day who is sending us the data. What we care about is the metadata, the source IP address, the source translated IP. We're going to take all of those different message files, and at the end, we're going to treat them as one VPN login event type within Exabeam. Now, where that's going to pay dividends is we start to model the data. We don't need to say we're going to model Juniper VPN this way and Cisco VPN another way. We say we're just going to model VPN logins. So for every VPN login, we're going to model things like the host, the source IP address, the time of those VPN logins. This allows us to have all of this out-of-the-box content that works very quickly and easily. This really relates and translates to our quick time to value. So once we have these events built, we're going to go ahead and start to build the sessions. And so this arrow equates to a configuration uh, file called content default. And in that file itself, there's a parameter called start session if. So if we look at that, that's essentially this config, a snapshot of this configuration. And the start session if tells XBeam when do I start a session for a user. And it's all predicated on what is the customer looking for. So by default, we'll start sessions typically when a user comes into the office and sits down at their workstation. What we're doing there is we're looking for Kerberos or NTLM authentications off of your domain controller where the user's logging into a workstation. Right? Users don't come into the office and log into servers, they log into workstations. So XBeam checks to make sure that the destination of that authentication is indeed a workstation. We also start sessions for things like VPN logins, application activities and logins, even physical badge. Now, the way we start sessions is completely configurable. I had a customer who had a bunch of Mac workstations that didn't authenticate off the domain controllers. What we did is we identified logs that were being generated locally on the machine, and it happened to be the Symantec endpoint product, their AV. And what we did is we took the event when the Symantec agent would sync the log to the server. That let me know that the user was actually in the office, on the domain, and those logs were syncing. We used that one event to actually start sessions. So we can be very flexible in how we want to start sessions within Exabeam. But this is the default configuration that I'm showing. Now, once we've started sessions, once that session is open, we're going to take any other authentication event that we see for that user and stitch them into that chronological timeline. Now, once we have a session built and when the session closes, this is when we begin to model the data to understand the normal behavior. So between session and models, there's an arrow, which means that there's a config here. And that actually equates to our models.conf file. And in our models.conf, these are the files that tell us what are we modeling, what attributes. And here's a quick snapshot of the model definition. You can actually view this from either the UI or the CLI. But the models.conf file is telling us, let's say for VPN, that we want, want to model the source IP address of a VPN login, as well as then the geolocation. So we're going to go ahead and start to model all of the various attributes that we're seeing across all of the logs. Now, once we've had these data models built, we start to understand the normal behavior. Once we know normal, we can start to identify those abnormalities and trigger rules. So between models and rules, this arrow equates to a rules.com file. Now, within the rules, there are two types of rules within Exabeam Advanced Analytics. There's fact-based rules and model-based rules. The fact-based rules are simple correlations, if this, then that. So something like maybe I want to add risk anytime I see a user VPN in from China. That's a very fact-based rule. The opposite of that would be the model-based rule, where I want to add risk anytime I see a user VPN in from a geolocation that they've never VPNed in from before. That's the first login from geolocation or abnormal login. And that's where the rules come into play. So you can define both fact-based rules and abnormal based, anomaly-based rules within the command line. Fact-based rules can now also be configured within the UI. And both rules can be modified from a risk scoring perspective and managed within the UI in our rule, uh, rule builder. So that's a quick overall end-to-end -end flow within Exabeam. So if we want to recap, we start with log data coming from the SIM or syslog. That's raw log data. That gets dropped into Hadoop. We then parse it with our parsers.com files into message files. Again, that ends up in Hadoop. So the first two portions of the processing pipeline are all happening on disk in Hadoop. Everything else happens in memory in real time. We take those message files and we extract them to a higher level and build events. We then take those events and build sessions. Once the session closes, we start to model the behaviors to learn normal. We then trigger rules against those data models to identify the abnormal activities. So this covers the high-level technical overview from the high-level architecture kind of at a 30,000-foot view all the way down to what happens to data from the time it lands on the system to what you see in the UI. So thank you very much for viewing the technical overview.